Let me read your mind for a second. You're a Smash player, obviously, and you're chasing something. Obviously, that's why you're here. You're chasing victory and self-improvement. But even more than that, you're chasing style. No, you don't necessarily want to be a mango or light, a player that thrives off stylish play. But you've had those moments where you picked up the controller and you made art with it. You got advantage and you kept it and you pushed your opponent to the literal edge. And when you get them there, you read them like a book. Then you wrote the ending with a spike, a gimp, a raw call out. You've outplayed people before and you want to do it again. But that's not really a hard thing for me to guess, right? It doesn't take a big psychic to know what makes a person watch video guides and fighting game content. It only takes playing and watching Smash competitively to understand the desire to outplay someone else. The question is, just how do you outplay an opponent? What even is an outplay? What even is an opponent? Where am I? What am I doing here? Okay, we obviously don't need to get that deep, but we should talk about what an outplay is. When people talk about outplays, they usually mean it in one or two ways, a big outplay or long outplay. The big outplay is when one player absolutely destroys another with a single move or string. There are usually gimps, reads, and even comeback moments. The long outplay is when one player dominates the neutral and rarely gets hit or falls into disadvantage. This can look like an extended string of combos, ledge camping, and pressure where one player barely gets to breathe. Or it can look like a series of whiff punishes, reads, and patient neutral wins. It's the difference between when a caster screams outplayed and calmly says he's just getting outplayed every stock. Regardless of which outplay you're seeing, chances are it came from a similar combination of factors. Almost all outplays are a combination of good reads and reactions. Because of this, for a lot of newer competitors and viewers, an outplay can look a bit like fate. What I mean by that is, is that the outplay looked like it was always going to happen and not critically think about how it happened. For example, watch MKLeo outplays Nairo here. MKLeo lands a two-hit jab, intentionally drops the third hit, then seems to either randomly guess that Nairo will roll in and thus reads him with the forward smash, or reacts to the start of the roll animation and hits him. But in reality, the outplay had little to do with random chance and a lot more to do with pressure. While we're on the topic, the outplay also had to do with the fact that MKLeo being the best player in the world for Smash Ultimate. He is the person you want to learn from and mimic. And you can do that right now with ProGuys.com. Click the link in the description to check out our website where you can watch our pro course delivered by the champ himself. Seriously, you do not want to miss that. But anyways, whether it's from standardized testing or from the Queen song, we all know what pressure looks like. But in fighting games, pressure is a little bit different than just fearing a bad outcome or feeling the stress of a situation. Pressure is when a player puts their opponent into a tricky situation and gives them little time to resolve it. It can be hard to see when and where pressure is being applied. So an easy shortcut is to think of pressure situations as ones where a player options are limited. Some really easy examples of this are when an opponent is trapped on the ledge or knocked to the ground. In both of these scenarios, a player has limited options to pick from. At the ledge, a player has roughly five options. Roll into the stage, normal get up onto stage, jump onto stage, re-grab the ledge, and get up attack. Each option has its uses, and we cover that in another video we've linked in the description. By forcing them to go to the ledge, their opponent applies pressure. Ledge and vulnerability will time out, and the player has to make a decision or risk getting knocked off the ledge and into the blast zone. They only have a few options, so the opponent has an easier time reading what they do. If the opponent gets the right read, the player gets hit and maybe even loses a stock. This does oversimplify the game somewhat, and different characters can have different ways to fight and stall around the ledge. But regardless of whether you have five options or 10 options, you are more limited and more pressured than normal. For comparison, you can look at the most even point of neutral possible, the start of the game. At the beginning of the game, both players have access to pretty much every ground and air move, every direction, every defensive choice, and every offensive choice. You're looking at a ton of options. Cutting all that down to five options is a huge deal. A lot of our plays come from applying pressure and limiting options. You can even cut your opponent down to one option. At that point, you don't even have to read them. You just have to execute a proper punish. Here's another example from the same set between MKLeo and Nairo. MKLeo cancels Palo Tena's recovery with Joker's gun. Now, Nairo only has one option. He has to up special to the ledge or he will die. Nairo can mix up his timing to throw Leo off, but that's about it. Leo hits Nairo again, forcing Nairo down to the same option again, then hits him a final time. 
You can apply this principle pretty easily to your own games. If you think of pressure as limiting your opponent's options, then it's pretty easy to spot pressure scenarios. Once you can see a pressure scenario, you can get into your opponent's head more easily and outplay them. Let's take ledge trapping as an example. When you have your opponent at the ledge, you can stand nearby, bait out a get up attack, shield it, then punish with a move or even a grab. You can jump and throw out a deceptively long lasting aerial, then carry the aerial downward to catch their get up or roll. Or you could just play snake and make the ledge a living hell. Up smash intensifies. Even if you don't play Snake, one of the best ways to get outplays, especially the long outplay, is to know your character's options for common pressure scenarios. Pretty much all the big disadvantaged states are high pressure moments. So creating pressure looks like putting an opponent off stage, putting an opponent in the air above you, forcing an opponent to the ledge, or knocking an opponent on the ground. Every character has different pressure situations where they're more or less dangerous. Part of creating the outplay is knowing where your character gets outplays most consistently. But knowing yourself isn't enough to cut it in Smash. The next step is to know your opponent. Knowing characters and matchups goes a long way in setting up an outplay because you learn what options they can use to respond to yours. If you don't play against lots of Rosalinas, you might not know that Luma is ride or die and will do all sorts of weird stuff to interrupt your outplay moment. If you don't know game and watch as a frame 4 up special, you're about to start eating a lot of parachutes. To see how much matchup knowledge really matters, let's take another look at a set between MKLeo and Nairo. But this time, one where Nairo is on the winning end. In this case, Nairo pushes Leo off stage and pressures him constantly, forcing early air dodges and bad ledge options. To cap it off, Nairo retreats to mid stage and kills Leo with a hard read. Nairo shows a lot of matchup knowledge in this simple interaction. He knows that Ike could land safely on the ledge or could try to beat his move with the size specials hitbox. He knows that lots of Ikes will want the hit because it gets them back to the center stage and relieves pressure. He also knows just how much distance the size special travels so he can stand right outside of his hitbox and punish it with a charge up smash. He gets rewarded with a huge outplay and a classic commentary moment from EE. E. Knowing matchups means that you know where characters feel pressure the hardest. Some characters can't handle offstage pressure. Others can't handle pressure on their shield or pressure at the ledge. If you know where the pressure hits the hardest, you also know where you can get the hardest reads most easily. But knowledge isn't a one-way street, and it can be used to prevent outplays as much as cause them. This is also why really good players don't tend to get styled as often. So how do outplays happen when both players know their characters and the matchup? This is where the game gets very mental and very personal. At this point, the outplay doesn't just come from the knowledge of the game's mechanics, but how each player uses those mechanics. Now outplays arise from players reading each other's tendencies. If you really want to outplay an opponent in-game, as complex as ultimate, you have to read the opponent's style on top of their character. Watch for patterns in their play. What moves do they use to approach? What moves do they use to defend themselves? Do they feel more pressure when playing aggressively or defensively? All these factors motivate how you should respond to them. For example, aggressive players can be susceptible to a bait and punish style. An aggro player wants to create an opening and style on you. So faking an opening as bait and with punishing can force them on the back foot, making them less comfortable and applying pressure. But a bait and punish style might not work on a patient defensive player since they don't feel the rush to create an opening. The bait may just give them the time to develop a good defensive position where they limit your options. We tend to think that players only ever have one of these styles. Salem is defensive, Esam is aggressive, and so on. But to compete at the highest level, players need to at least have some ability to switch between styles. That's right, we've done it folks. We've reached the final layer for this video. Conditioning is a term fighting games loan from psychology, and it simply means reinforcing a behavior by punishing it or rewarding it. In Smash, conditioning is the art of creating predictability in a game where options can be nearly limitless. Even at the ledge, your opponent has a minimum of five options. If you were to just guess what they would do, you'd only have a 20% chance to guess correctly. By knowing your character and theirs, you can make more of an educated guess. By applying pressure, you can make that guess college educated. By conditioning, that guess becomes so educated that it passes its thesis defense and gets a PhD. Conditioning and tendencies run so deep at the top level of Smash that smart options can become dumb options and vice versa. At the highest level of Smash, you can see weird interactions where players spot dodge three times in a row or hold a Smash attack until it somehow hits. 
So when you see a top player outplay their rival, remember that what you're seeing isn't really just chance or their character or even their raw ability to hit buttons quickly. What you're seeing isn't even just one big moment of brilliance. Those outplays you're seeing are a result of a ton of knowledge, a ton of mind games, and a ton of pressure. For as difficult as all that sounds, you absolutely can apply it in your games. You might not have time to study all your opponents or even all the matchups in the game or even all your character's moves. That's all right. Just remember that an outplay often comes from a read. You can get more reads by applying pressure. You apply pressure by eliminating the options your opponent can pick. You can eliminate those options through a mix of conditioning, reading their style, and putting them in scenarios where your character applies pressure their character has trouble taking. If it's a lot to deal with now, start slowly with your own character, build up your knowledge of your character and how they apply pressure. Then start to learn matchups, how other characters apply pressure, how they escape your pressure, and so on. Bring on the mind games by catching their patterns and by conditioning them. And finally, hit that subscribe button. You'll continue to learn more and more and come up with great ideas for your gameplay with us here at Pro Guides. It might take a bit, but if you keep it up, I promise you, you're gonna hit that highlight reel.